podcasting from Hartford. You're listening to the Connecticut Scoreboard Podcast. All right, so joining me today, we've got Brendan Adams. You saw him suit up for UConn the past few years, now now over at GW. Brendan, thanks so much for hopping on the podcast today. Definitely. Thank you for having me. So, Brendan, I, w- I want to start back from the beginning. I know you were one of Coach Hurley's first recruits to UConn. I know or- originally you were you were slated to go and join him at Rhode Island. What mm. was his pitch like to you when it, when it was time to go to UConn? And was it an easy call to follow him there? I mean, so, yeah, I, I had decommitted from Rhode Island. I had to get out of my letter of intent. And when that happened, uh, when, when I was finally able to field calls again, he called. And um, it was kind of like, it wasn't a hard sell to get to get to UConn. Like, uh, he wanted me up there for a visit. I came on a visit and like a couple hours in, I told my parents, like, uh, I think this is what I want to do. Yeah, definitely. What was that first season like for you there? I, I know we, we've heard a lot around here in Connecticut about what those practices are like. So what was it like that first year and in, in walking into one of his practices? Um, It was crazy because... As as everybody's heard, he's he's an intense guy, especially when when it's time to to produce and and prepare and practice. So every practice was was a hundred percent intensity. It was crazy, but uh, I mean, I, it was fun at the same time. Yeah, it was it was his first season there too. I know your first year as a freshman. What was it like getting adjusted there your your first year? And you know, it, it, I feel like it had to have been an interesting time there you know he's adjusting to working with a brand new team you're coming in as a freshman and just getting adjusted to the college games what was it like that first year there um I mean it was it was difficult because it was just there was there was the team that was there already and then yep. there was the team that Hurley kind of not not necessarily the team but the culture that Hurley was trying to build and and to change from what the culture was to what he wanted it to be it was tough so he had to come in immediately and, and get them to adjust in that culture. So it was just difficult. Um, but but it was also like he was getting the, the culture right. Like, so it, mm-hmm. it all made sense. You could see what the vision was. Definitely. I know like one of one of my favorite things from his first year there, you know, being a UConn fan was that game against Syracuse at, at MSG. Here it is your first year. You get thrown right into that rivalry early on. What was it like? Because I mean, I feel like that was that first win where everyone's like, all right, like new coach, like new team mm-hmm. here. Like things are starting to get on track a little bit. You know, you get the mm-hmm. win over Syracuse. What was that game like for you? That game was crazy. So that was uh, we had the exhibition. And then as far as real games, that was the third game of the year. And um. The garden it was packed. Um, like the the both both fans, both yeah. fans in the rivalry were both real intense. Like there were fights in the in the stands <laughs> that game. And um and just the the excitement of the game, like it was it was something I had never experienced before. Like I think my first or second shot, I shot it I shot it three and I wasn't adjusted to where the NBA line was. <laughs> So I shot it from mad far, and I was thinking, like, and it, it went off the backboard. And everybody was like, why are you shooting from so far? And I was like, I just thought that was the line. You go from from that year, and, it, you know, it was definitely an adjustment year for everybody, you could tell, uh, in kind of getting things, you know, up to speed and getting squared away with the culture that was trying to be instilled. What was it like then going into to year two there? Um, and kind of the differences from your freshman year to sophomore year there? Um, I mean, so so early in sophomore year, we still had like there was still some some developing to do culture wise, like yeah. a lot of development. So I think middle of that year, at some point in the middle of that year, we kind of flipped the switch and and it became this is what we have to do to win. Everybody was bought in that this is what we have to do to win. So the second half of of my sophomore year was really fun. Uh, it was just a really funny. We was winning. Um. We won like every game at the end of the year except like two. We went like eleven, yeah, like nine out of the last eleven or something like that. And yeah, it was, yeah, like it was just fun. Yeah, I, I remember, and I know from like a fan's perspective, it was interesting. But I'm curious from a player's perspective. I know, like in the first half of that year, you guys just had a ton of close losses. It was like mm-hmm. you guys were going to overtime and losing, or it's like double overtime, like tough, tough games. What's that like from a player's perspective? And like you know you're getting close to there and like beating those teams, but like just not quite being able to get over the hump there. Yeah, it's like every every one of those games early from that early point, from after the Florida game. And then I think we had a, we went to what? One overtime, two overtimes with Xavier and Charleston. Yeah. And then it was a couple more. Wichita was a close, close one. Tulsa, so, we lost yep. that day. It was a close one. Um, it was just like, it was frustrating. Like as much as it felt like, 
in the in the kind of narrative between the team was like, this is how close we are. And and we need one, we need to grow just a little bit more to get over this hump. Mm-hmm. And it felt like we started to do that. But at the time it was super frustrating losing close game at the close game at the close game. Cause it's like we should be winning. Like we need to find a way to win these. So it yeah. Like, it was definitely a little frustrating. And that year too is interesting because you're starting to get some more of the guys that Coach Hurley brought in as his recruits, and yet you still have a mix of some of the guys who were, you know, original to the to the Ali teams that were there. I know Christian Vital, you know, really took on a bit of a leadership role that year. What was it like playing with him? Because he seems like he'd be a fun guy to play with. No, nah, it's definitely fun to play with CV. Um, he. The the narrative about him was kind of I never really liked it like especially when I first got there it was all the selfish the it wasn't him CV is one of the most passionate people and basketball players I've ever seen so like a lot of things he do he just wants to win so bad yeah. he just wants to make the best play so bad and and make sure that we win so a lot of that I think it came off wrong and then once we started to win at the end of that year and he was a big part of those wins. I think it allowed that narrative to change a little bit into into seeing what it really was. Yeah, I, I think just from watching, you could tell down the stretch there, like he knew it was his last year. Like he he wanted to go all out and, mm-hmm. and make sure you guys were able to have the success, you know, that you wanted, to, or at least that he wanted to as well. How tough was it? You know, you guys were really hot, as you said, to to end the season. What was it like finding out that the tournament was going to be canceled? I mean, the last game is Houston, big game at, at Gamble. I remember mm-hmm. it was like the last sporting event I was at till like a year ago. I mean, the place is packed. It's loud. You guys beat a, a good Houston team. And you're like, hey, this this team can get on a run here in the uh, American tournament there. Yeah, it, it, it was sick because we felt like – we honestly felt like we were not – we, we were the hottest team in the conference going into Definitely. the tournament. And we felt like, obviously, with that, we felt like we were the best team going into the tournament. We had turned the corner at the right time. Uh, everybody was feeling good. And at that time, we only was going with, with eight players. I think we had eight players on the team. And, mm-hmm. and we were just going like that. Everybody was feeling good. Um, everybody was getting their extra shots in practice. Everything was just what it Everything was just slowing. So we and we would have won. And then we would have been able to go to the NCAA tournament that year. That year, that's what yeah. we honestly felt like. So for it to end like that it was, it was heartbreaking. Yeah, no, that that's a tough one. And I think everyone here too knew, knew you guys were going to go on that run there that year. Mm-hmm. The, the, going to year three is is a big transition too. Now, now not only you know is it year three of Coach Hurley, more and more of his players coming in, but it was that jump to the Big East. What mm-hmm. was it like? When you so I want I want to walk back a little bit. When did you first find out that you know you guys were gonna be going to the Big East? And what were your initial thoughts? Because I know the Big East now is different from you know a lot of what UConn fans knew of the Big East back uh, in the day there. Mm, um, so like there was I don't remember exactly when I found out, but there was always like for that whole from what the end of my freshman year it was announced. Yeah. Like, during that time, right? Yeah. So from like the end of my freshman year for that few weeks leading up to I remember. Because we had Dan, Coach Hurley had the Dan Hurley basketball camp that summer. So leading up through there, it was like, ah, they're about to go to the Big East, but nobody really knows. So we didn't really know anything either. And then mm-hmm. it kind of just broke one day, like, they go, we're going to the Big East. And then it was it was there from there. And that's what we began preparing for, like, the day it was announced. Yeah. No, were, were you excited about the move and in, in going to the Big East? 100%. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know fans like to, to rag on the AAC a little bit. And I remember we saw the signs in that last game against Houston. Mm. For, from a player's perspective, was there much of a jump when you made that move from the AAC to, to the Big East last year? Um, There was definitely a jump. There was definitely a jump. But I don't think it takes away anything from the talent of the American. Yeah. Like, I always say, like, we didn't win the American when we were right. there. So it was like we was coming to the Big East and we still had something to prove. Like we didn't, we weren't coming from being the best team in the, the, the team who won the American three years in a row. That's not like what it was. It was, we was coming from coming in what fourth or fifth in the American. Yeah. And then coming to the Big East. So it was a, uh, it was a jump, but not, not as big as I think everybody thinks it is. What was it like going through last season? Cause I have to imagine it was probably a challenging one for you guys with COVID You've got no fans there, really. You've got the pauses that come up. What was it like going through that last year? Uh, it was it was crazy, especially because the pauses are so abrupt, and it's like yeah. you for a minute, for a couple of days, you don't know what is going on at all. Like, right. Like you just 
they they end up testing that same person for three three more times. You don't know if we really going down or not. And then when when it actually is verified, you got two days where it's like you can't do nothing, and then you get tested. So it's like it, it's a lot. And then it also just takes time away. Like a break like that in the middle of a season is yeah is bad for a team. Like. In, in, in every way, like even Christmas break, a long Christmas break, you're usually going to come back from it a little rusty. Right. In the next couple of games. So that's what it was, I think, three different times for us during the season. Yeah, no. And it just seemed like every time you guys would get in a bit of a groove, one of these pauses mm-hmm. would come. It was like you guys were in a groove and then it's like, oh, well, the ref had it. So now you guys are in another bit of a exactly. break. So, yeah, no, I, I have to imagine like just the choppiness of it had, had to be tough. Mm-hmm. I've, I've got to ask because last year was just so interesting because obviously James Booknight pl- played a big role for the team. What was it like, you know, when, when you see him go down in that game and realizing, you know, he's going to be out for a bit, what, what was that experience like in knowing that, that roles were going to change quite a bit on the team and, you know, more was going to be expected from everyone there? I mean, it was, it was a, I think it was a big adjustment for everybody um, because James was so like good. Uh, he was, James was really good. So it was like, <laughs> even everybody knew like everybody's gonna have to step up and it was a time when we needed to get hot too so it was like everybody just knew it um I think I think it was tough though like them some those are some tough shoes to fill yeah and I think it, it needed everybody to step up a little bit to fill one guy's shoes so yeah what were your thoughts on, on how the team came together because I feel like you guys really were able to to mesh well last year and, and to the point when, when James came back you know everyone Kind of had their game stepped up to another level there. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we had a rough, we had that rough stretch when while James was out, and yeah. I think um, and it was tough. It was just tough for everybody. And then we ended up when we beat Butler, we go down again with the with the rough situation. Yeah. So it was like I think we just went through so much adversity in the middle of that season. That it was like we we just came together. We used it to come together at the at the end, and everybody was playing their best basketball. I know everyone was going into last year hoping for that NCAA tournament. What was it like for you to to make the NCAA tournament? Because it has to be a pretty big accomplishment, you know, from your end. It was huge. Um, it was it was huge. Like that's the since we since I've been there, that's been the goal of every team: bring UConn back to the yeah. tournament. Like, that's been the goal since I've been there. So it's, for that to happen, it was it was huge for me. Yeah, definitely. I know we're coming up on, on the NBA draft and we're seeing, you know, the, the talk about James and where he might end up. What, what was it like playing alongside him, you know, being in the backcourt with him, um, you know, as he's getting ready to take those steps and go to the next level? Um, it was it was it was incredible because you he's so talented. Like and, and but he's not he's humble at yeah. the same time. So it's like. If you just sit there and watch him, he'll he'll you can learn from him a little bit just from on the court. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Just the little things he does, and, and it's fun to just play alongside of him, and um, and also like guard him and stuff in practice. You get better from just doing that, so it was always fun. Better put back dunker him or Andre? Mm. I gotta say Dre put backs. I gotta say Dre. <laughs> We, we we saw some good ones from both of them last year. Mm-hmm. Those, those were always fun. So, you know, it comes time, um, you know, you guys have the tournament game and the, the season comes to an end there. What was your thought process like in, in deciding to make that move and, and come to GW this year? Um, I mean, for me, it was just, I first of all, I graduated. Yeah, congrats. So yeah. I graduated and then just the way, just the way things had turned it there, it just, it just made sense. Um, uh, we got home. I talked to my parents. Um, I talked to my brother. I talked to everybody around me, and um, it just made sense. So, and then when once I was actually in the portal, I knew I kind of wanted to come home, and I wasn't mm-hmm. really telling, I wasn't really telling anybody that's what I wanted to do, and and so it was <laughs> like, but in the back of my head, I always knew it was like if the right school calls, it's close to home. That's what I'm gonna do. Definitely, and. You know, heading heading down to GW. I know your brother played in the A10. Has he has he given you the scouting report on everything and uh, what to expect in the conference a bit? He ain't, he ain't, he ain't giving no scouting report. He said uh, <laughs> he did say he, he gonna cheer for Bonaventure when we play them though. So <laughs> I don't know. 
What, what's it been like now at GW? I know we're in the summer here going through some workouts in, in practice, but it seems like you guys have a really interesting team this year. I know you guys have some other transfers too from, from high major schools and bringing that together. So what's that been like in, in getting adjusted and situated with a new team here? Uh, it's been, it's been, it's been fun. It's been interesting. Um, cause it's a, like, it's just a lot of talent. Um, I believe, and it's all coming from different places. So the biggest thing has been like to gel, to, to get to know each other on and off the court, because we all coming from a place. So it's kind of like, everybody feels like they got a little bit of an ego. Like I'm coming from here, I'm coming from here. <laughs> so it's like, it's the most important thing for us is going to be gelling and find a way to make sure we all on the same page when, when, when we on the court. Yeah. For, for those listening to the podcast, as I was telling Brendan before we started, I'm from Connecticut originally, grew up a UConn fan, but went to GW. So I'm pulling hard for Brendan and this GW team as well. I, I was really excited when they when they brought on Coach Christian. Um, it seems like he brings a lot of energy to the table, too, just in a, a slightly different way than Coach Hurley does. What's mm-hmm. it been like working with Coach Christian so far? Um, Co- Coach Christian is fun. Like, he's, a, he's a fun guy just to just to be around. Um he really like you can tell he loves his players. He'll do anything for his players. Um, he brings energy. He brings that type of energy. Like it's just love. You can tell mm-hmm. he's just doing like he's doing everything we can to make sure we all are at our best so we can win and that we all doing our best off the court. All right, I've got some fun ones here. Just as we wrap, some some quick ones that I like. I, I love asking players. Where's the toughest place that you played on the road? Uh, fifth third. Okay, all right, Cincinnati. Fifth third. Those games were always tough against Cincinnati. Like those, that was the one team in the AAC. Like you, you knew those games were going to just be like, mm-hmm. you know, just grind out every single game. Yeah, every time. <laughs> when we were talking about the energy uh, of Coach Hurley and Coach Christian there, I mean, I think one thing UConn fans love is seeing Coach Hurley's face on the sidelines or w- what he's doing. What's it like from a player's perspective when you're either out on the court or sitting on the bench and you see him going crazy out there? Um, it's, it's honestly, uh, like, it's hilarious. I'm not going to lie, like, <laughs> It's hilarious, like it's 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 got his place. So it, you see, it, he turned up over there, it turns you up with him. But like at the same time, like after the game, you definitely laughing about it. Like we all talk to each other, laughing about it. <laughs> it's, it's it's hilarious every time. We notice it every time. Yeah, because because you know, it's like as soon as the game's going on, someone's tweeting out or putting on Instagram, you know, the reactions of of his face mm-hmm. and stuff. So definitely some some good content there. Um, in terms of your time at UConn, you have a like just a favorite memory or a game that, that you just really enjoyed, or it's just something that's going to stick with you. Um, a favorite memory. I got a lot of memories. Um, I do one of my favorites got to be Cincy. Um, when we beat Cincy at, yeah. at um, Gamble. Um, just the end of that game was so crazy. I mean, I like I felt like I had a good game. Yeah. And then, that game, like the energy was crazy in Gamble at that day. I think it was on a weekend. My little sisters was there. That was the first game my little sisters had came to. Oh, cool. So, and then um, just the way we won, we got that last stop. Um, I definitely already remember that one. I, um, yeah. I, I know fans always debate between XL Center and Hartford in, in Gamble. Do you have a preference of where to play? Um, I like playing in Gamble. Yeah. Personally. Yeah. I don't like. I like the feeling of XL more. Yeah, when when you the, the arena's built, but yeah. I don't like XL rooms. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting there. Um, in terms of the team, you know, now that now that you're you've been with this group for the most part, that that's been there, that's going to be back this year. What, what are your thoughts on them heading into this season? Do, do you like the direction that that this team's headed in and the makeup of it? I do. I think I think the team looks good. I think they have a um, really good year. I think the biggest thing would be filling because we're, we're going to play like that team is going to play defense. Like, yeah. They're going to they're gonna play defense. Uh, we got to a point with our defense last year where we were playing great and everybody who guards that way is still there. So it's like, and then Zay, Zay going to hold down the defense anyway. Yeah. It's like, they're going to be fine there. The biggest thing would be like, who's going, who or what combination of people are going to replace what Book Knight could do offensively. Yeah, definitely. From being around those guys, is there a guy you see that is kind of like next in line to to step up and take over there? Um, it would be tough for me to say one guy. Honestly, yeah. it could be so many people. Like Yaf is, I don't think people really know how good Yaf is. Mm-hmm. Yaf is good, like 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 real good. So, he, he he showed like I I was shocked. I think it was Seton Hall when he had that big dunk. 
And I was mm. like, I, I didn't realize he had that in him. But the thing about Gav is that he could do that almost every time. Like, if you watch some of the layups he shoots, it's like, bro, you could have dumped it, bro. <laughs> like, he, he could do that every time. Like, he's super athletic. So it could be him. Um, obviously, Dre. I don't really know the freshman that just came in, but mm-hmm. I, like, I, I, was, I was hearing how good they was. Adama as a big. Adama, Adama could do it as a big. Um, we got a cook coming back healthy next year, so it could be so Dre. It could be so many different people. Yeah, RJ, of course, but you know RJ going, RJ going to do everything on, on offense. He's a facilitated guy, so like it could be anybody. You know? Yeah, no, definitely, definitely going to be a fun team to watch and, and see what they're like. Uh, I get you out of here on this one. What's like? What's something we might not know about like Coach Hurley or the team that that that's like a fun fact or something that that you might know that that we might not know. Mm. This might take a minute. <laughs> this might take a minute. Guy, I'll give you time. I'll give you time. I don't know. This is a tough one. Because <laughs> the guys I would really have something about left. So it's like. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> well, not even, I guess, like, the funniest stories I would have would be Josh. And Josh ain't there no more. So I ain't going to get Oh well, we'll we'll we'll, t- we'll take it anyway. What is, was Josh like the funniest guy on the team then? Josh was hilarious. Everything and it wasn't even like on purpose. It was just like everything Josh did was funny. It was like, <laughs> so like it's just stories about him, like endless stories. Just like you laughing at what he's doing. <laughs> all right, all right, I'll take it. It's interesting to know like who who's the funny guy on the team. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, all, all that type of stuff. But Brendan, I, I really appreciate you coming on. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you and uh, the team can do at GW this year. I know everyone from up here in Connecticut will definitely be be rooting for you down there and excited to see what you can do. Definitely. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate it. And thank you for having me.